So in this segment, we're going to be discussing um, a statement from David Davies and a couple of others from the Brexiteer gang who bemoan civil servants for not doing the job of ministers, which is um, funny. So Whitehall uh, did a really uh, crap job negotiating Brexit, says David Davies, and I hope that's not seen as a swear word by YouTube, um, but we will find out. So uh, David Davies said, quote, um, he said that about... Um, the negotiations between the UK and the EU, which is hilarious because he was our first Brexit minister. So, um, you know, first we have to define what Whitehall is. According to the Collins Dictionary, um, it means Whitehall is the Whitehall is the name of the street in London, which there are many government offices. Uh, you can also use Whitehall to mean the British government itself, end quote. So it's clear that all of government, from civil servants to the prime minister, the entire thing, and he's blaming the lot of them, despite him being a minister um, before the Theresa May Brexit deal was agreed, you know, the withdrawal agreement, the first one. So former Brexit secretary said the civil service, quote, sympathised with the European view, end quote, as Theresa May's government found itself in a stalemate uh, over the terms of leaving Brussels. And I think the sides knew that the, both sides knew the Brexit situation was a complete mess. I think maybe the EU side sympathised with May as she had no majority. She gave them... Um, she, she gave that majority up in the ill-fated 2017 election. I think both sides did not want to jeopardise the Good Friday Agreement. Um, if you look at the May deal, it keeps the entire of the UK um, in the EU single market with the aim that the UK would provide some sort of border solution for you know the situation in Northern Ireland, which I guess um, that became the Northern Ireland Protocol. But this was all done to protect the Good Friday Agreement. This was not done um, as a favour to the Westminster government, which is something a lot of rejoiners don't understand, and that's something I'll talk about in another video, potentially. Especially given the EU would have uh, been more willing to make accommodations for a current member of the EU, whilst now we are a former member, which means little to them. Let's not forget that David Davis voted for the Johnson withdrawal agreement as well. You know, he was saying that we know all about this deal, it's a great deal, blah, blah, blah. Why is he complaining when he said it was a great deal? And also, you know, the idea behind the Theresa May deal was the entirety of the UK would stay in the EU single market um, until they sorted out the border issue. That's why you had all this stuff about technological solutions. Um, and once we found these, you know, mythological unicorn solutions, the UK could then leave, oh, sorry, GB could then leave the EU single market uh, for goods at that point. And um, yeah, we would have the Brexit similar to what we have now, I guess. I think both sides uh, sympathise with each other, realising May boxed herself in, with wanting to end freedom of movement, ending any idea we could stay in the single market, but also wanting to protect the Good Friday Agreement. At least that's how I've read it. You know, maybe I'm wrong on that one, my interpretation. Mr Davies, who resigned from May's cabinet in July 2018, as he did not believe in her checkers plan for leaving the EU, said bureaucrats should take some of the blame for the deadlock, and blaming civil servants is pretty low, given that... Um, you were the then Brexit minister, and you're meant to offer leadership and direction. Given you have little understanding of how the EU works, you're probably still limited in that regard. It is no wonder that negotiations were a mess. Maybe it was because you thought of going to Berlin instead of Brussels. He said, quote, You know, if you feel the person on the other side of the table is a nice person, and you really understand their point of view, there is a tendency to think that they'll be friendly to you, which is naive on a grand scale, end quote. And I disagree with this. I think it's better to be negotiating in good faith rather than having animosity and bad faith between people. Look at the breakthroughs we're having right now with the protocol versus when Frost and Trust were there. It's going to be a lot better now because the UK is negotiating more in good faith. Um, I don't want to say in good faith fully because the UK are tricky, always have been. Whilst he said Brexit would eventually deliver, he voiced frustration with the more recent logjam over the Northern Ireland Protocol, and maybe he should have thought about that, um, thought about how Brexit could impact Northern Ireland and Ireland before he thought Brexit was a good idea, you know, te mythical technological solutions. Uh, Davies also revealed that Boris Johnson, the former Prime Minister, found himself, quote, caught short, end quote, when asked to speak during the crisis at Chequers because he thought Miss May would go uh, go to somebody else first. Um, he, uh, Davis said about Boris Johnson, quote, Boris does everything at the last minute and he hadn't thought through the arguments, so he made a complete horlux of it, quote, end quote, he added. And it's a weird dig at Johnson, but given that David Davis turned up to meetings with no notes, should you be bemoaning other people and their lack of preparedness? You got this other person, uh, Caroline Dynage, um, another former minister, said she felt forced to steer civil servants towards, quote, new and imaginative um, 
end quote, thinking as their instinct was to introduce further red tape. And she said, quote, I think we've kind of got a bit lazy. We weren't looking for a, for a workaround. We just whacked through a bit of legislation, said Miss um, Dynage, in her reflections on her time as a front bench. And I really don't remember her at all. Um, she added there was a satellite delay in the thinking of civil servants who remained stuck in the mindset of having to deal with political deadlock even once the Conservatives had a landslide majority. And, you know, you realise your job as a minister um, is to offer leadership and direction, right? Like, you can complain that they may have been boxed in with orthodoxy, which is fine. You know, you can argue civil servants have a set way of thinking. But if you ask them to solve a very difficult problem like the border issue with Ireland, you will get, a, you will get limited answers due to the Good Friday Agreement. You can't put a hard border there. Um, you know, between Northern Ireland and Ireland. But a border has to go somewhere and the DUP won't like the Irish Sea, you know, the Irish Sea option. Um, is that what they told you, the civil servants told her? Because in the end, the Tories lied to everyone to get their deal through. Like, to blame civil servants is just the lowest of the low in terms of intellect. Because, again, as a minister, it's their jobs to offer leadership and say, um, these are the things I want done. How do we get them done? And what are the, what are the pros and cons of it? And this is the best bit of the article. You got Lord Frost, the Iceman, the former Brexit negotiator, said bureaucracy and um, the so-called quote woke end quote diversity schemes across Whitehall represented quote a big burden compared to getting the day job done end quote. And of course, mate, you know civil servants could have solved the issues you created through um, your uh, northern northern the Northern Ireland Protocol. Um, the specific Brexit you negotiated, but also the trade and cooperation agreement. But because of all the woke stuff, they could not, you know, they had to count how many women and minorities were on the various teams. Like, give me a break, dude. You negotiate a crap deal with some, and some Brexiteers have turned on it. When will you accept? When will the Iceman accept responsibility? Uh, you know, is he really proud of his legacy? Is one of the ones who helped ruin this country? Like, get the hell out of here. Honestly. Get the hell out of it, Lord Frost, bro. This is the worst bit of the article by far. But, you know, you have so many ministers now refusing to, former ministers, refusing to take responsibility for their actions and what they have done to this country, honestly. Um, and for Lord Frost, you got, you know, th this is the man we had negotiating for us. The first calling point of the UK's negotiator immediately after Brexit will not be Brussels. It will be Berlin to strike a deal. With who? The commission are based in Brussels, chief. Who were you going to do a deal with? Angela Merkel. That's not how it works, dog. Like my man does not know how the EU works, and I, I, I think you know this tweet from twenty sixteen. I still would be surprised. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he still does not know how the EU works. Honestly, um, these three um, former ministers here—the biggest lot of frauds I've seen for a while. But anyways, I'm gonna leave it there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe, support the channel on Patreon if you can, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.